welcome back to the wheel drill. We're going to start uh, the next one, which, uh, as I quickly mentioned, uh, I kind of called it the Sweeney Todd. Um, the reason for that, uh, well, the background of that is uh, when I was a kid, when I was younger, and again, um, back in the 80s, and I believe it's 1982, 1982. So again, 1982, just like that, uh, the Conan movie. Um, Cable had first just come out. And uh, one of the things that was on quite a bit that uh, I watched when I was younger was a uh, Broadway play uh, with George Hearn and Angela Lansbury. Uh, and it was Sweeney Todd on Broadway, the demon barber of Fleet Street which uh, just a few years ago they, they remade with uh, Johnny Depp, and, uh, which, was, which was pretty good too. Um, but I always remember that, that Broadway play. And, uh, but the uh, design today that we're working on with the wheel drill kind of reminds me of a uh, barber's pole. If you've ever seen a barber's pole outside of a barber shop, it has uh, either a red stripe going around a white background or a red and blue stripe. And uh, the barber pole has an interesting history. The, uh, the red band, well, I should say that many centuries ago, barbers used to do uh, surgeries <laughs> along with uh, physicians as well. And uh, they used to do a lot of bloodletting and the, the red stripe around the barber's pole represents uh, a bloody bandage. And uh, another thing is uh, some barber poles are uh, red and blue with the white background. So uh, another uh, way of thinking is that the red stripe is uh, arterial blood. <laughs> And the blue stripe is, is venous blood, which has less oxygen, which is, of course, bluer. Um, and barber poles, which are seen in the United States, hence red, white, and blue, things like that. But So uh, you might almost think of this structure, too, that you'll see next as like a, a candy cane, like your, your traditional red and white striped candy cane. And uh, you'll see why. But uh, this one took a lot of finagling. <laughs> To try to, to try to get to work and uh, I had a lot of complications with it which I'm gonna show you but uh, so uh, here we go with with the wheel drill and our little uh, uh, minor theme of, of the 1980s as well uh, just from a personal note all right well let's keep going
Okay, so here we go. This is a rather complicated uh, structure. So I have a very long pressure lever brace holding this together. So uh, let me go one point at a time. Uh, here's our core two. The core two is pine, okay? And as you can see from one of the pictures, one of the uh, uh, a, a strip of wood came off the spindle reload right uh, right at the grain. All right, so I'm hoping that's not going to interfere too badly with that. As you can see, I have a uh, two by three pine stud as the base with a pine uh, spindle reload. And uh, I'm definitely going to fill that with some sawdust because it's super, super high. Right? Let's fill that all the way up as high as we can get it. All right. Now, the reloading spindle itself is a uh, large section of dogwood, which I put on the jointer to straighten out. As you can see, it's um, almost like a decahedron, kind of, it has maybe like 10 sides to it. So it's, it's almost a cylinder with just those uh, ridges that run down from the jointer and, uh, and that worked out pretty well. The brace end is a section of hickory, <coughs> excuse me, which goes into a brace of uh, another 2x3 pine. Um, I did uh, lubricate it a little bit with some linseed oil. Okay, so that's, and that's deeply set in there. I, that's definitely not going to pop out. So that brace is screwed into this long 2x3 lever, and there's two of them joined together, and they go to the posts. Okay, so let's start at this end of the post. There's a long screw, a 5 inch screw, that runs through this post. And that supports, uh, this is the fulcrum area, okay, I also screwed it into the, to the post. Let's go to the other side here. I put a nail in this one because I couldn't get past this beam, this post, to, to screw that in with the, uh, with the drill. So I, I had started a hole and I just nailed the rest in there, so, so both sides are supported. Here I nailed in uh, a support for between, and the beam itself runs through this other post on the other side, it runs along this length where there's weights attached. I'll tell you right now, the total amount of weight on this is 40 kilos. I know it's kind of a rather a haphazard looking device thrown together. Now I had a problem here where the brace is here, but I had it back here. And I had four screws on this side, four screws on the other side, which means that the lever is now very weak. You see I have weight on that end. So this has the potential to break right here because it's a kiln dried pine. All right, so I'm worried about that. And uh, so I didn't want to put any more weight. I need more weight. So I didn't want to put any more weight on that end where it'll break. So I put it directly on top of the spindle here and just in front of it. So I have a mixture of levers going on here. So I have both a type uh, two and a type, I'm sorry, uh, I have both, a, yes, a type 2 and a type 3. So I have weight in the middle and I have weight on the end. All right. Now, how this kind of works is uh, well, I bought these wheels that go on the bottoms of like cabinets and things like that. Took the wheels off, 
So what I have is the axle and with my uh, grindstone I made a wedge in the center here because both screw holes would not fit the uh, one inch uh, width of the pine stud. So I put a screw right in the center with that wedge that I cut with the grindstone with these two. And what happens is I have a red rope, of course I chose red because it had to be a red stripe going around the spindle. Um, the one up top keeps the rope up top. The one on the bottom guides the rope on the bottom. And you notice it's loose. Well, that, it's that way for a reason. That's so I can keep it turning in one direction, as I'll show you. Okay, but I think we're ready to get started. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, put this down. In frame. Now, um, if you remember from the spool uh, drill we did, I noticed that if I turned it um, in a reciprocation of back and forth, okay, that just kind of got the friction started. I mean, I could keep going in one direction. But that's going to use up a lot of energy. So what I'm going to do is get it started by just doing the reciprocation. When I see that it's, it's starting to smoke good and I'm getting a little bit of dust, then what I'm going to do is just go with the, the unidirectional method uh, motion. Okay. So how this works is um, as I pull, I put tension on the rope, okay, which when I pull goes in one direction. But what happens is, is obviously the rope starts to spool upward, and I don't want that because it's going to go all the way up over the to the brace. So what I do is, is I give it some uh, slack, and it falls down, and then I can pull it again as it goes up. Now hopefully I'm going to be able to match this rhythm and keep it going long enough and fast enough without too much complication, okay? <coughs> so the first thing we're going to do is get the reciprocation going. Again, we have 40 kilos on top. Also, by the way, the core two, the spindle reload, uh, the dead space center is still in the middle. I didn't take it out. Okay, we got a good amount of dust. So I'm gonna start going in the... Here's our complication. Let it fall. Let it fall. our coal. Thank goodness. Awesome. And that's what I call the Sweeney Todd. And I'm really glad this didn't break <laughs> right here. That's a real weak spot. I definitely kept my kids out of here. I'm like, don't come in here at all. All right. So we're going to move on to some other neat things and uh, let's keep going all right C 
so uh, uh, before we did uh, uh, Conan's uh, Wheel of Pain, uh, and that was taken after uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, which is um, back in 1982. Well, <coughs> maybe the theme of the wheel drill is also about uh, the 1980s, <laughs> because uh, back in 1986 which by the way was the year I graduated high school um, another movie had come out which uh, I couldn't stop watching <laughs> when I was a teenager and that was uh, Eddie Murphy's uh, The Golden Child and uh, there's a lot of funny scenes in that movie but uh, there's this one scene uh, where uh, Eddie Murphy has followed this uh, woman to uh, Nepal to Tibet and uh, they're at a temple and they're looking for a knife uh, to help solve this problem uh, regarding this uh, uh, child they're looking for who's like a uh, like an avatar uh, part deity and uh, so at one point they're at this temple and in, in Tibetan culture in their spiritual culture, they have these things called Tibetan prayer wheels, and <coughs> they look like uh, small drums, like round cylinders uh, that are uh, bipolar, and they they spin around. And really, the idea behind this is um, when you say a prayer, the prayer is uh, more effective if you spin this prayer wheel because. There's a prayer also inside the wheel or something like that. And the, in the culture, they believe that if the more times it spins or that it spins, uh, the prayer is more effective and goes to wherever it's going. And uh, there's this one scene where uh, Eddie is asking for this Tibetan elder for if he can have the, this, this dagger, this knife. And he... He takes a hold of one of the Tibetan prayer wheels and he goes, ah, 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 I want the knife. And then he follows it up with, please, <laughs> while he spins this thing like he's uh, like a DJ or something. And uh, that, that image never, you know, it sticks in your head because it's just funny. Not to be ugly American because we don't want to be ugly American, but, but it's funny. Anyway, uh, the next technique you're going to see is uh, developed after a uh, Tibetan prayer wheel. So it's bipolar and it has a, it's on a cylinder and it sits and it goes in a unidirectional motion. So, so I'm going to show you the, the photos of how uh, all of this got put together. The core 2 ends up being uh, rattan the spindle reload and the, and the base reload and uh, we get it going so I'll show you how we put it together and how we did it and, and here we go and we'll keep going
So we're ready to begin uh, trying out our technique of uh, our version of the Tibetan prayer wheel. And uh, as you can see from the photos, uh, our core two is going to be a spindle reload and a base reload of Rich Hand. Um, just so you know, um, in practicing this, uh, this technique, um, what I've gone through is uh, I've had a trial run of bamboo, but the bamboo couldn't withstand uh, the pressures and the spindle reload just cracked into a bunch of pieces. Uh, I had attempted oak, which as you know is a much higher density, but uh, the only way I could get any kind of friction at all was to put a whole bunch of weight on top of the pressure box and uh, what then I what I got then instead was absolutely no centrifugal force so I would spin the uh, or I would try to spin the prayer wheel and uh, it would just stop because I would need so much weight on top that that would just slow everything down so that didn't work. I had tried something uh, on the opposite end, something extremely soft like Sotal, but uh, that also can't really withstand the pressure too much. The Sotal, at least the Sotal I was using anyway, uh, was too unstable. It was too soft of a density to be able to, to pull anything off. In fact, the one I was using was almost like, almost like balsa. So, so we're going to go for a definite medium wood at this juncture, and we're going to use rattan. Okay, um, this is a one inch diameter spindle reload with a uh, half inch uh, hole uh, taken out for the dead space center. Okay, now it hasn't been mated, but uh, I cut out a one inch socket here on the base reload with uh, the Forstner bits. I already put a notch in it. What we're going to do right now is there's nothing in the notch, but I'm going to fill it with some dust. Okay. Because it's a little bit high. Now, in learning our lessons from uh, the past one we did, the spool drill. Um, uh, what we did was we did quarter turns back and forth reciprocation just to get it warmed up before Jake went on his uh, almost 200 foot run with the cord. <clears throat> um, and that seemed to really get it to work. Now, one of the reasons why, I believe, uh, with evidence that uh, you don't really do unidirectional drills for friction fire is because it requires an, an exorbitant amount of energy um, to move something in one direction like that. Um, so therefore uh, I think the evidence presents that the primal A basics that we see around the world are all reciprocating uh, techniques, they're all reciprocating methods. So they all go back and forth. And uh, then there's the rare, so rare that uh, some people don't even believe it can truly work, um, the gauchos fire drill, which we do know does work, okay? Um, maybe not according to the illustration, but uh, in practice can work if you balance all the variables. So let's get this set up. I'm lifting the lid and as you can see from the photo our uh, device weighs about 42 pounds according to the scale. Now we're not going to need lubrication because it's in a copper cap. So, 
So, uh, I'm hoping to get some real, uh, some uh, centrifugal force with this. I'm not going to get much, I believe, but we're really going to, I'm really going to try. So, uh, so I think we're ready to give it a shot. I'm going to get this warmed up. And then we're going to go in a unidirectional motion. Back up my chair. So it's starting to smoke. I see we're getting some very light dust. I just want the dust to touch the top of the spindle. It's starting to get darker, so you know what? We're just gonna go for it. It's kind of like a potter's wheel, isn't it? Would be an interesting technique to do, right? Potter's wheel. I think we're getting there. And this is only 42 pounds. It's sitting on this core too. Let's have a look. And we have a coal. Let's get in there. I'm going to carefully remove the, the device. So, yes, we do have a starting uh, motion of reciprocation, but we're using that to get warmed up because you know what? Just don't have the energy to keep it going in one direction just to get it started. I mean, I probably could marathon, uh, practice marathoning that, but I'm not doing it. So. But it can be done in a unidirectional method, as we see. With a medium hardness. Okay. Um, again, no um, weight on top. So in a way, this is a variation of the rig drill, where the weight of the spindle itself uh, provides the pressure okay so uh, although it is technically really truly bipolar unlike the rig drill which um, was really just held in place taking the space around the top all right so I think we're ready to move on to uh, our next one and uh, let's keep going. Okay. Alright and welcome to our next segment of the wheel drill 
and uh, uh, this is also uh, a cool one that you're going to see. When I was uh, a lot younger, so I guess uh, in the late 70s, I was around uh, 10, I guess maybe 1978, 77, 78, I was like 9, 10 years old. And uh, of course I read comic books as a kid. Well, lately, uh, I should say finally, the uh, Thor movies have come out. The first Thor, and then now he's in the Avengers, and now we're waiting for Thor 2 to come out. But uh, Thor, back in the day, was uh, probably my favorite. Uh, Marvel uh, character in the comics and uh, I don't know what it was I just thought that him having this hammer was so cool the things that he could do with it I mean it would make him fly he could smash anything um, he could throw it and it would come back like a boomerang so uh, I have to admit Thor was probably back then my my absolute favorite and I was very excited when the movie finally came out so, uh, in going with the theme that we're doing right now, the unidirectional method, I was thinking about how Thor used to spin his hammer, uh, Mjolnir. I figured out that that's how you say it, Mjolnir. And uh, the force of him having spin it uh, would be an incredible... Uh, well, it would be an incredible force. When he threw it, uh, it could smash through anything, and that force of it spinning alone, if he didn't let go of it, you know, he could fly behind it. I mean, it would, it would carry him to wherever he needed to go. So, uh, you know, with the imagination running as, as a little kid, I thought that was, that was really awesome. So, and I can even remember being in my garage, trying to make my own hammer. I mean, I found this rock that kind of looked like um, the head of the, the hammer. And I remember trying to figure out, how am I gonna attach a handle to this? And, and then, uh, you know, I would go over with my father to the hardware st store once in a while, and I would see um, sledgehammers or you know uh little uh little tiny sledgehammers if not actual sledgehammers and i would look at them and i would just stare at them and stare at them and i wish i could buy one because i didn't have any money and uh you know if i can have that that would be great <laughs> but uh so keeping in with the uh, the theme today of the unidirectional method we're gonna do uh thor's hammer mjolnir we're going to sit that in a spindle and we're going to spin that around in a unidirectional method. We're going to try and get some centrifugal force with that. Not as powerful as Thor can actually do it, but we're going to, we're going to make fire with that. All right, so hope you enjoy this. Let's keep going. Be right back.
Okay, so we're ready to get set up for our Thor's Hammer Mjolnir uh, method technique. So we have the half of the hammer handle cut off and it's epoxied in so it doesn't go flying out on the tangent of the orbit. Uh, it is a two and a half pound hammer, uh, so that's 1.1 kilograms inside a handle of ash and again we have rattan as our core two um, so the base reload and the spindle reload are rattan um, the uh, the spindle reload in this case is actually uh, seven eighths of an inch instead so it's a little smaller than the last one which was an inch Bit that in there and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put up top to start off we're going to put 10 kilos up here on top of the on top of the pressure box now there's nothing in the notch as you can see. So we're going to take a little bit of tinder and we're just going to pop that tinder in there to fill the space. Okay. And, uh, we're going to play with the weight. It might need more weight. I might decide it needs less weight. Either way, here we go. We're going to give it a shot. So really the point of this is to get a little bit of centripetal force, just like Thor's hammer would go around and uh, catch it again and spin it around, spin it around, spin it around. It's almost like that wheel that's on the playground, you know, your kids go on the wheel and you, you throw it around, you spin it around and they, they go around with this centrifugal force. All right. So again, we're going to warm it up the way we did before with the quarter uh, quarter turns just to get it warmed up and get a little bit of dust in there. It's catching on the tinder. It's still catching on the tinder. Just gotta tuck that in better. Less complications, the better. So it's getting warmed up. Getting some white dust in the notch. It needs a little bit more weight, I think. So what I'm gonna do is put the whole thing up top. We're gonna double the weight. We're gonna do 20 kilos. We're gonna do 20 kilos instead. Dust, got a little bit of smoke. Okay, let's spin it.
throw that weight to the side as fast as we can. See what we got. That's smoking pretty good. Let me take the weights off. We're gonna take the millimeter off. Okay. Oops. Sorry about that. There we go. Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, doing orbital revolutions with a little bit of centrifugal force. Doesn't go all the way around. When I throw the hammer, it doesn't make it quite all the way around. It may make it like just to where I start, but uh, it really doesn't go past. And that's with 20 kilos up top. All right on seven eighths of an inch diameter solid rattan so there was no uh dead space center taken out of that okay all right let's keep going So uh, that's the end of this uh, section for the wheel drill. And uh, if you can recall earlier in the uh, in this Hiden Denki Den show, uh, I had mentioned that um, I had thought that a unidirectional drill just just can't work. And here we go uh, into yes, it does work into different kinds of henka or variations different kinds of uh, methods, techniques that you can come up with, with uh, doing a unidirectional method, technique. So, uh, uh, I hope it was inspiring, and uh, just keep going, keep going, keep going, push farther, push farther, see what can be done. So, uh, you know, keep exploring, discovering, uh, keep moving forward. So... And that's really what all of this is, is about with the um, main theme overall being uh, the life value, okay? Uh, different things that you could do in order to, uh, to uh, provide, protect, preserve life. So that's what really all of this is, is really all about. So let's keep going. Let's move on to the uh, letter X, uh, the Xylo drill. You're going to find that one interesting, I'm sure, too. 
And uh, so uh, let's keep going.